You know, it's been a really long time since I've recorded one of these. I uh, hope you haven't missed me. Welcome back to the old truck. Yeah, we're still out here in the middle of nowhere. In the middle of the night, talking about Jesus. Gotta love it. I've uh, been doing some uh, reading, and thinking, and watching, and praying, and uh, noticing, seeing a lot, and just enjoying the presence of the risen Christ. If you don't do that, I recommend you do that. Give it a shot. He's alive. <clears throat> I was listening to uh, a podcast. Uh, with uh, Rob Bell, yeah, I know. Oh, a heretic, and uh, uh, Carson Pearson, Carson Pearson. I don't know how you say his name. The guy who uh, was on the Netflix movie uh, Come Sunday. You know, the one that doesn't believe in hell. You know, perfectly fine, I guess. Uh, can't be really true to this the scriptures, but. Whatever, that's fine. Uh, that's not a uh, defining doctrine that uh, you must or must not believe in. Uh, a lot of people think that, you know, you shall know them by their belief in hell. Oh, wait, no, it's you shall know them by their love, huh? Oh, okay. <laughs> it's easily confused. You know, people love hell. <laughs> and super excited about their enemies going there. Just burn them all, right? Yeah. <clears throat> all right, which leads me to the topic of today's words from an old truck. The message. The message, the message, the message. For the past 1,500 years, the message has been in the mainstream camp, whether through universalism, uh, uh, as early as uh, 500 years ago with uh, the Protestantism. Uh, and even more closer to home within the past 100 years or so, the uh, fundamentalists, the, the new Calvinism and five-point Calvinism and Arminianism and the Reformed Universalists and the Reformed Protestants and the 30,000 denominations in uh, the wing of Protestantism, excuse me, gassy, <clears throat> and uh, what, 20,000 in the uh, Universalist wing. The message, the message, the message that's supposed to change the world. It's changed the world. It has, it really has, it's changed the world. The change, unfortunately, has uh, not been for the better. The podcast that I was listening to was uh, Mr. Pearson, or I can't remember his name for some reason off the top of my head. Nevertheless, uh, Carson Pearson. I'll have to look it up. Nevertheless, in the podcast, he was talking about he met Billy Graham during the Oklahoma City bombing. Uh, he got to host Billy Graham for the governor of. Uh, the state, because the uh, the president showed up, you know, uh, everybody and their grandma showed up to view and witness the Oklahoma City destruction. And Billy, Billy Graham and his wife Ruth walked in, and uh, he and his wife met Billy and uh, his wife Ruth. And, Billy Graham walks through the door, you know, a mountain of a man, you know, it's like walking into the presence of God himself, you know, whoa, it's Billy Graham. And this is back when the, uh, he wasn't a Unitarian. Uh, he was a, uh, you know, evangelical Pentecostal preacher. And he's like, man, walking into the presence of holiness itself. And Billy Graham was riddled with Parkinson's at that time. And, uh, you know, shaking and he walked in and he hugged everybody, he hugged the wait staff. The, uh, the uh, cooks and uh, the butlers at the governor's mansion hugged everybody. 
And uh, he was able to spend hours with Mr. Graham sitting and talking and talking about how easy today's preachers have it. They could jump on a jet and fly to, you know, uh, India or fly to, you know, Africa, and stay for a couple of days and come back. He's like, that wasn't like that. When, when we started out back in the forties, you know, he's like, we get on a boat, go to Africa and we didn't stay for a couple of days. We stayed for a month, two months, three months, you know, and then make our way home on a long boat trip back. He's like, my wife there, she raised my children by herself because I was out preaching the message. She built our home with her own hands because I was out preaching the message. And he said, as he walked through the ruins of the Oklahoma City bom bombing, he, he looked at him and he said, it seems like for all of our preaching, things have just gotten worse. Man, that hit a nerve with me. Billy Graham, a God among men, saying that for all of our hard work, it doesn't seem like we've accomplished anything. And as I thought about that, <clears throat> it really settled down into me and I just thought, you know what, he's not wrong. He's not wrong. And uh, I'll probably piss a few people off with this, but I don't really care. The truth is the truth. You ask anybody, any random non-believer or believer, what's the message that uh, you heard? Oh, well, the message is you're a piece of crap. And uh, if you could just straighten up and say these magic words after me, God might like you. That's, that's the crux of it. From the universalist perspective, the Protestant Reformation, the Pentecostalism, Arminianism, if you could just do something right, maybe you'll get in the club. That's been the message. Otherwise you're going to hell. Back to the other point. If you could just straighten up, maybe Jesus would like you. Set up shop in you. And then, if you act right and tarry long enough down here at the altar and you say the right incantations and uh, you straighten up your thought life, then, possibly then, the Holy Ghost might show up and you get to speak in tongues for a little while. That'd be cool. That's the message that we've all heard over the years. The problem isn't that the message hasn't been preached or believed. The problem is the message has been preached and believed and the world has acted accordingly. You have told them that they are separate from God. You have said that he has no way possibly in you now. But he can be if the price is right. If you will just do this or that or the other, make sure you bring your 10% in. And that was a universal doctrine right there, whether it was Catholicism that was teaching it or Protestantism. Everybody's held on to the tithe. 10%, baby. Bring it to me. <laughs> Which is ridiculous. No Gentile has a right to the Levitical 10%. And they only got it every third year. Go back. Read Deuteronomy chapter 14. And grow up. I did read a really funny meme, though, that said... Tithing is the surcharge for not actually reading your Bible. So, 
Take it for what it's worth. I'm sure that pissed some preachers off. So, <clears throat> what's the problem here? The problem is that the message that has been preached has had its actual result in that people have believed that they are separate from God. I'm a piece of crap. Might as well act like a piece of crap. I'm no good, eternally separated, hell fodder, made for fire, gonna burn, useless, hell bound, devil bent. And we wonder why people are blowing themselves up and raping and pillaging and plundering and burning. What hope do they have? They, they've been told already because they didn't say the incantation that God's nowhere near them. He can't talk to them. He can't speak to them. He can't love them for God's sake. He definitely doesn't love them. You know, but if you uh, say this prayer after me, he might start liking you a little bit. Then Jesus will jump in there and you will have changed God by your actions. You, you, you powerful person, you, you will have changed God into a new creature who will love you because you did something to change God. That's the message that we've preached. And I'm just as guilty. I preached it. Hard and heavy. <laughs> I could preach hellfire and brimstone as good as anybody. Unfortunately, I didn't know what I was talking about, and neither did most. They know the doctrine. They've learned the doctrine. But they haven't learned Jesus. And they don't know his father. And they are terrified to talk about the spirit. Because, you know, that's the one thing that Jesus said. Hey, can't nobody be forgiven if they tell you something about the Holy Ghost. Don't talk about the Holy Ghost. Don't even mention his name. His name. Not her name. I don't care if it's a feminine noun in the Greek. I don't care if it's a feminine noun in the Hebrew. There ain't no woman in the Trinity. It's so ridiculous. If there's no femininity within the Godhead Trinity and we are all made in the image of God, where did all these girls come from? Any idea? You, you got an answer for that now? Yeah, crazy. The fact of the matter is we have completely rejected the Trinity and its beauty. We have completely rejected the, the working of salvation that is Jesus Christ himself. The Trinity is Father, Mother, and Son. It is the family unit. It is love and expression. It is other-centered, self-giving love. And it has accomplished something that the world hasn't even heard. It's completely missed. And we have gone out of our way to make there, a, make there be a surcharge to this salvation when Jesus is salvation himself. And it is a pitiful excuse for a good news gospel when it has become a threat that if you don't say these right words, you are going to hell. To hell with that. Preach the gospel. You know, the gospel is Jesus Christ. Death, burial, and resurrection. He is humanity. In perfection. I, I wish 1,500 years ago we'd have gotten a hold of the truth that is the gospel instead of these Gnostic, ridic ridiculous beliefs. What would the world be like now? It could be like Jesus prayed. 
heaven on earth. But we have missed it. We have told the whole world that it's separated. We have told the whole world that it's evil. And God said, do not call what I have cleansed unclean. And that is all we've done. And we have screamed, touch not the unclean thing. And we have missed the point that there is nothing outside of Christ. And he is the clean thing. Everything. This truck, my glasses, you, the whole world is clean in him, but nobody has told them that. Everybody has been told a lie, and it's your job, and it's my job to present the truth. And his name is Jesus Christ. And he has done the work of the Father. He has accomplished exactly what the Father sent him to do. He and his mother and his father have set up a kingdom inside of every belly on the planet. He is life itself and before they were born before they were formed in the womb, he put his touch, his seal, his blueprint. You are children of the Most High God. You are holy and righteous. You are perfect. You have been redeemed. You are deemed holy, perfect, good. You are the image bearers of the invisible God and you are living far below your station. You are kings and priests, queens and holy ones, adopted children of God. I am sorry that no one has ever told you that. The message that you've heard and believed before now has led you to think that you are something that you are not. And that lie existence has no power. It is paper mache without the glue. Let it fall away and see yourself in him because you are in him. The whole world is in him. If you do believe this, It's only because he believes it through you. You are saved by grace through faith and that not of yourself. It is the gift of God. But how will they know unless they're told? But that's just it. Ain't nobody saying this. Ain't nobody talking about this. There's a few of them out there that are heretics and divisive troublemakers who have seen the light and will not be brought back into the fold. But when will the world see the truth that they have been changed, made new, perfected, brought into Christ forever? Humanity and divinity bled into one on a cross 2,000 years ago with Roman nails and Jewish wood. Sorry for getting all preachy out here in the truck. Happens sometimes. dark but there's a light shining you know me I work midnight shifts got a new job 12 hours this is my day off and what am I doing sitting out in the truck talking to y'all 
about Jesus. Why? Well, because y'all are the family. Y'all are my family. You don't even know me, but I know you. And I'm going to spend eternity with you. And I love you. And the Trinity loves you. And the Spirit of God is already in you, working from the inside out. And uh, He's going to convince you. Or she's going to convince you. Or they're going to convince you. That you are exactly who He has made you. You are perfection personified. You are glorious. You are amazing. Keep up the good work. I'm proud of you. Love you. Remember, you're not alone. You're never alone. Signing off from the old truck. Short and sweet. Love you. Bye-bye now.